Hello everyone and welcome to our eLotus webinar today. My name is Donna and I will be your host and your moderator. For over two decades, eLotus has been your trusted source for TCM continuing education for acupuncturists. We offer the large selection of online CU courses with over 3,000 CE hours. If you are new to eLotus, remember to sign up today for an eLotus account and receive a free one CU course as a welcome gift. This offer is valid for new accounts only. Don't you just love free TCM resources? We've been working on the ultimate free resource website full of Mastodon's acupuncture and our newly added traditional acupuncture points at our eLotus Core website. Here you'll be able to see needling demos, learn indications, locations, and more. You can also visit our eLotus website and click on free stuff for more TCM resource. If you can't get enough of learning, join our eLotus Gold Pass family. As an eLotus Gold Pass member, you'll, you'll have access to our full English course library, and that includes live webinars, distant learning courses, articles, and audio courses, all in which you may earn CEUs for a year. So sign up today and start learning. Okay, that Kate takes care of everything, so here's a quick introduction of Dr. Chen. Dr. Chen is a recognized authority in both Western Pharmacology and Chinese Herbal Medicine and is the lead author for the Chinese Medical Herbology and Pharmacology, Chinese Herbal Formulas and Applications, and Chinese Herbal Formulas for Veterinarians. To learn more about the tonic herbs he will be talking about today, you can get his books at www.evherbs.com. Okay, let's go ahead and welcome Dr. Chen. <laughs> All right, thank you, Donna. I know I'm gonna do a quick audio and video test while Donna is fixing the PowerPoint. All right, so if you can hear me, please uh, give a thumb up or let Donna know so we can begin. All right, looks good. All right, hello everyone. Uh, it's good to be back with you. Uh, today, we're going to talk about our last chapter of the subject, uh, which is the tonic herbs. Um, so we have spent the last year and a half covering uh, all the different chapters within Chinese herbal formulas, or Chinese single herbs and also herbal formulas. So today will be the last one. And uh, what we will do next week, once a month, is we will do a summary for all the chapters. Uh, so I'm kind of doing this ahead of time um, to elic elicit some response, if you will. Uh, so what I like next week is uh, sum up all the most important points of single herbs and uh, and herbal formulas, but at the same time, uh, open up to as many questions and answers as possible. Um, so that way, um, I can get an idea of what all your questions are, what your concerns are, uh, what topic you would like me to address. Uh, that way, we can make this class, uh, the final class, as useful and as informative as we possibly can for your needs. Um, so sometime between now and then, uh, please send Donna an email or send myself an email and I will compile all those questions and make next uh, month class uh, basically tailored to your needs. All right, so let's go back and get back to our class today, which is the tonics. And I think this is a very important class and also one that contrasts probably quite the most um, between TCM and Western medicine. And the reason I say that is because um, Chinese medicine is a holistic medicine it is primarily a preventative medicine, all right? And there's a famous saying in TCM that the inferior physician treats disease after they have occurred. The mediocre physician treats the, the patient when they have mild, or mild and moderate symptoms. And the superior physician treats the patient when they don't have any symptoms. So basically, prevention is the most important, but sometimes the most difficult because during that time, it's the hardest to observe if there's anything wrong with the patient. And also, uh, patient, generally speaking, if they don't feel like they have anything wrong, they probably don't want to see a physician or seek treatment, all right? So for that reason, I think Onyx is very important because it's, it is emphasizing the preventative care to help to observe and identify the problem before they occur. And the Western medicine model, as we know today, 
tend to be more disease specific. And if you think about the name disease, it basically means disease. So patient is not feeling well, patient is having some issues, and they seek out uh, Western medicine and seek out treatment. So almost by nature, it's a uh, reactive process where disease happens first, and then uh, drugs are prescribed and treatment is given. And in fact, uh, that's also how the healthcare or insurance company models are based, you know, uh, for um, the physician to treat the disease and be, get reimbursed for it. And there is no incentive, really, to keep the patient well and stay well. Okay, so that's quite unfortunate, but that's the state we're in today. All right, so that philosophy also uh, reflects into the medicine itself in that uh, this is one of the largest chapter of single herbs and formulas to use the tonic herbs to tonify the patient and restore their optimal health. But at the same time, okay, in Western medicine, there is really no drugs to keep the patient well. Uh, most of the drugs are designed to treat disease, whatever they may be. All right. So as far as tonic herbs go, um, think of the whole category as herbs that helps to restore, that helps to maintain wellness. Okay. And those subcategories include qi, blood, yin, and yang. So overall, the single herbs and the formulas are divided into specifically qi tonic herbs, blood tonic herbs, yin tonic herbs, and yang tonic herbs. Okay. And these are the four main things that make up the human body. And if you were to look into this a little bit further, and let's look at it from a Western perspective, because I think for those of you uh, who have a Western training or who are early into TCM training, uh, I think this helps quite a bit. Basically what happened is um, your body has anatomy and physiology, has form and function. Okay, so what happened is when we talk about qi tonics and yang tonics, I think they uh, corresponds best to the functions of the body. Okay, and then when you think about blood and yin, they correspond best to the form of the body. So once again, you have function and form, you have physiology and anatomy. So what happened is herbs that tonify qi and tonify yang generally will help the most to treat the functional abnormality or physiology aspect of the body. Okay, and then on the other hand, herbs are toned by blood or nourish yin generally are most useful to treat the anatomy or form irregularity of the body. All right, and what happened is all these things, of course, tied together, right? So if you have uh, a compromise in anatomy, compromise in form, then what happened is then these organs without proper anatomy, without proper form, whether they have been atrophied or damaged in some way, obviously they cannot perform their proper function. All right, so then in that case, what happened is not only do you have yin deficiency or blood deficiency, you also have qi deficiency and yang deficiency. So once again, anatomy and physiology tie and they go hand in hand, and same, so do form and uh, functions. All right, so even though the tonic herb is subdivided into qi, blood, yin, and yang tonics, in the end, what happens is you often do need to combine these things together to best treat the patient. Because when you have ir irregularities or you have deficiencies, once again, uh, they all often happen at the same time. All right, so as far as qi tonics goes, so these are the herbs that helps to restore or improve the function primarily of spleen and lung organ systems. And spleen mostly refers to your digestive system. So your spleen and stomach, your digestive system, your gastrointestinal system. So they help with um, digestion, they help with absorption, they help with energetics, and all the things that follow after that, right? So what happened is our body needs fuel. Right, so we need to eat, we need to you know, break down the food, absorb the food, and that will provide nutrients for the rest of the body. But if your digestive system cannot perform its proper function, then everything after that will be compromised. So basically your entire body will be compromised. All right, so make sure that digestive function is able to perform its normal function is very, very important. 
If not, that is the beginning of all the disease. And also for patients that suffer from chronic illness, okay, they've they been bedridden for a long time, they have a chronic illness. Then what happens is that is also the beginning of treatment for the patient with chronic illness. So once again, spleen and stomach your digestive system. If it's not performing properly, that is the beginning of all the illness. And also for patients that have chronic illness, treating the digestive system is the very first step to take for the road to recovery. And that's why in Chinese medicine, there is a school of thought called the spleen school, okay, or pi wei lun, or spleen and stomach school. And what that is, is um, to really uh, help the patient to you know, uh, heal and stay well, the very first thing you need to do is make sure they have a healthy digestive system. Okay, so that's the spleen and stomach. So that's basically what a lot of these qi tonics are. They help to bonify the spleen and stomach so they can pre perform their optimal function. And once you are able to eat properly, digest the food, absorb all the nutrients, then what happens is it gives your body a fighting chance for healing and recovery. All right, so these are the qi tonics, specifically for the spleen and stomach. Then also, qi tonics apply to the lung as well. So lung is responsible for breathing, it's responsible for respiration. So uh, this is another place where your body gets the oxygen, gets the vital air into your body. So once again, uh, if you don't get oxygen into your body, then chances are your body won't won't be able to perform its normal functions. All right, so obviously this is very, very important, both for a short-term and also for a long-term basis. So once again, if the lung is deficient, you're not able to get the oxygen in, you're not able to get the oxygen into the lung and into the body. So these are the herbs that tonify lung qi and once again, help to restore the function of the lung and then once again, help the body and the rest of the organs and the system to be able to perform its optimal functions. All right, so qi tonics primarily refer to herbs that tonify the spleen qi as well as herbs that tonify the lung qi. All right, and then to go one step forward, forward uh, you also have the yang tonics. Okay, you can make an argument that generally speaking, qi tonic is milder, it's usually the first step and then yang tonics are stronger and it's also a deeper aspect. Okay, and generally speaking, herbs that tonify yang primarily affect the upper, middle, and also lower jiao. Upper jiao refers to heart yang, so this is primarily your cardiovascular system. Middle jiao refers to your spleen and stomach, so this is digestive system and so to some extent your metabolic system. Okay. And lower jaw refers to your kidney yang. And kidney yang is probably the most diverse out of these three. Kidney yang is responsible for your sexual function, your reproductive function, your genital urinary function, your metabolic function, and also to the broadest aspect, your endocrine system. All right, so your growth, your maturation, your aging, and so on. All right, so kidney yang is the source of all the yang in the body. All right, so what happened is when your body, various organ systems, is not able to perform its proper function, and this is not just short term, but this is actually long term, then what happened is that decline in function is associated with some type of yang deficiency. So once again, it could be heart yang deficiency, it could be spleen yang deficiency, it could also be kidney yang deficiency. All right, so yang deficiency is more long-term, it's a deeper level of deficiency in the body. All right, so like I mentioned, uh, yang, kidney yang is probably the most diverse, cover the most broadest aspect of many different things. All right, so reproductive, sexual, genital, urinary, metabolic, and primarily also the um, um, endocrine system. All right, blood tonic herb is probably the simplest out of the four concepts uh, because blood basically refers to that viscous fluid that's flowing inside your blood vessels. All right, so in Western medicine, blood deficiency basically refers to anemia. In Chinese medicine, blood deficiency refers to just you know lack of blood 
that's circulating to the different parts of the body. And in addition to just the blood, it also refers to the blood cells. And that includes the white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets, and so on and so forth. All right. So when the blood is deficient, initially you will see uh, the absence of the blood or deficiency of the blood showing up in the forms of sallow facial appearance, pale lips, pale nails, and so on. But in the long term, what happens is when you, la when you have lack of blood and inability of the blood to nourish multiple organs in the body, then what happens is all the organs will then slowly suffer and not be able to perform its normal function as well. So in the beginning, it's just the blood cell. In the long term, all the organs will slowly see decline in their functions. Okay? And then lastly, the intonic herbs. So in, as we mentioned earlier, refers to the anatomy, refers to the form of the body. All right? So as we age, as we have certain disease, as we have chronic or maybe the consumptive type of disease, then what happens is different forms or different anatom anatomical structures of the body will gradually suffer. So they will lose the form, they will lose the mass, they will go through atrophy, and basically will start to shrink. All right. So maybe imagine you know somebody who has a bone fracture and they are put in a cast. Then what happens is the area is immobilized, and then as the bone heals over a three-month period, then what also happens is the muscle will suffer from great atrophy because they are not being used, and therefore they shrink in mass. Okay, or maybe somebody who have hypothyroid, maybe somebody who has um, diabetes then what happens is the associated organs, because they are not functioning properly, may also reduce in size, may also go through atrophy, all right? So then what happens is the thyroid gland may shrink in size, the pancreas may reduce in size, and that applies to testicles, applies to ovaries, and many other organs as well. So what happens is as the organs or the muscles or the anatomical structure shrink in size, that's basically the inefficiency. That could be the liver in, that could be the kidney in deficiency. And then what happens is as the muscles or the organs shrink in size, generally what happens is with reduced size, they also cannot perform their proper functions. So generally speaking, in deficiency will also be accompanied by young deficiency or qi deficiency. So in refers to the reducing mass of the organ, and qi and yang deficiency refers to the decrease in functions of these associated organs. All right. So once again, in deficiency and yang deficiency often occur hand in hand. Once again, in refers to the organ, yang refers to the functions. Okay. And at the same time, what happens is as these organs reduce in size, uh, oftentimes you may also have deficiency heat. Okay, what, what that actually means is, from a Western perspective, is that as these organs are reduced in size, you have apoptosis of these cells or the organs. So basically, the dead cells or the dead tissues are eaten up by macrophages and they are disposed. And that, in turn, creates some inflammation and creates some heat. So those are the insufficiency heat signs and symptoms where the patient may show tidal fever, they may show you know, sweaty hands and palms, um, dry mouth, dry throat, nice sweats, and so on and so forth. So on one hand, you show inefficiency, you have decrease in functions of the organ, so the qi deficiency and yang deficiency, you may also have deficiency heat all at the same time. Okay, so these are the things to keep in mind that as change in disease happens as they have uh, atrophy of the organs, as they have uh, decrease in functions of the organs. Uh, they may have all these signs and symptoms. And generally speaking, this is something that occurs gradually over a long period of time. This is not something that happened overnight. Okay, so these deficiencies take a while to occur, and they also take a while for you to use herbs to correct um, the underlying problems. So once again, uh, these indeficiency conditions, generally in Western medicine, is a chronic consumptive type of disorder that occur over a long period of time. 
It could happen to organ systems. It could happen to musculoskeletal systems. And it can affect many different parts of the body. All right? So let's now look at specific examples. And we'll take uh, specific qi tonic, blood tonic, yin tonic, and yang tonic, single herbs, and also formulas at the same time. All right? So the most famous and probably the most commonly used single herb that's a qi tonic is ren shen. Okay, uh, the PowerPoint slide is kind of overlap. Anyways, uh, what it's trying to show here is that... Oh, Donna, can you help me to take out this top part? I don't know if it's showing up on the thing. No, it doesn't show. It doesn't show? Okay. Uh, it's showing that Z it refers to human and Sun refers to root. Okay, so basically, if you were to take the entire root and all the the main root and all the lateral roots, what happened is, uh, interestingly, part of it does resemble a human being, where you have the head, the body, the arms, the legs, and so on. And that is one way or the other implying that the main root or human root is one of the best herbs to restore help for the humankind. Okay, so for patients that have chronic uh, consumptive disease where they are bedridden, this is one of the best herbs to help to restore health. And that's why it's called Zetsen, basically the most important herb for the humans. All right. And from a Chinese medicine perspective, this is a great herb to tonify the Yuan Qi or the source Qi. So this is the most fundamental of all the energy in the body. It primarily tonifies the spleen help with the digestive functions, it tonifies the lung, help with the respiratory function. In addition, it generates body fluids, and also at the same time, help to calm the shen, which is your spirit, and also improve the mental functions. So overall, the most important part is it tonifies the source qi, help with your digestive function, help with your respiratory function, and help you to restore I'll help you in the very beginning so you don't get sick as far as improving the digestive functions or when you have chronic consumptive disease or chronic illness, bonifies the digestive function can you can, so you can begin on your road to recovery. All right, so Zensen is definitely one of the most important herb in the Chinese medicine. Okay, from a Western medicine perspective, uh, this herb affects many different systems in the human body that are all listed here. It affects the cardiovascular system, central nervous system, endocrine system, immune system, cognitive system, and so on and so forth. Okay, so some link very well to Chinese medicine. Others, uh, you can kind of see, you know, if you take the function and extrapolate it a little bit more. So what happened is er, the function to uh, influence the digestive system obviously is function to tonify the spleen. The function to relieve asthma is obviously its function to uh, influence the respiratory system or tonify the lung, and so on and so forth. All right? Okay, so just one second. All right. So one of the first things, and I, I wanted to spend a little bit of, of time on this, is there is a little bit of misunderstanding. Okay. Lensen actually has a regulatory effect on the blood pressure and the cardiovascular system. So a lot of people think that Zensen has a one directional type of effect, that the use of Zensen will stimulate the cardiovascular system, will increase blood pressure. And to some extent, that's true. Okay, uh, Zensen does have some effect to uh, increase blood pressure. But what happened is it has really a regulatory effect. So as you can see here, that it it has, on one hand, a vasodilating effect to help to control blood pressure, all right? So this is something that a lot of people don't understand. A lot of the warm herbs, a lot of the qi tonic herb, you may think that the warm herb has a stimulating effect and therefore may cause an increase in blood pressure. Uh, what happens is that may be true or that may not be true. And the reason I say that is because on one hand, the warm herb tend to be more moving, to tend to be more stimulating. So some herbs, in, in fact, may cause that. So one example will be ma huang ephedra. It's a warm herb that may increase blood pressure. 
Okay, but on the other hand, you also have many examples of warm herbs that actually will reduce blood pressure. And I'll give you some example. Uh, that includes zensen, huangqi, astragalus, and also duzhong. Um, and these three herbs are all warm herbs that actually reduce the blood pressure. And the reason is because they have vasodilating effect. So they dilate the blood vessels, okay, warm the hands and feet, the peripheral parts of the body. And the reason that it's able to do that is it, w it dilates the blood vessel, increases the blood flow to the peripheral parts of the body, and also in turn, uh, reduce the blood pressure. Okay, so Zensen does definitely does have some effect to dilate the blood vessels and in reduce the blood pressure. But on the other hand, uh, for patients that lose a lot of blood, uh, where they have hypotension, they have shock, then what happens is Zensen also has a very strong stimulant effect to increase the heart rate, to increase the contractility of the heart, and of course, increase heart rate and incre increase blood pressure. All right. So overall, what happens is if you prescribe Zensen at a therapeutic dose, generally speaking, the body, the cardiovascular system will normalize itself, will regulate itself. So generally speaking, at within the therapeutic dose, it really does not affect the blood pressure all that much. Okay, so keep that in mind. Zensen's effect on the cardiovascular system is more of a regulatory effect, but not a one-directional type of stimulant effect. Okay, and the same thing is true with central nervous system. Zensen has a bi-directional regulatory effect on the central nervous system. All right, so at low doses, it tends to be more stimulating, all right? So it tends to be more stimulating, help to increase alertness, helps to make you more alert, helps you to become a little bit more hyper and stimulant. But at large doses, then it tends to be more inhibiting, okay? So in the cases of, in the cases of overdose, then it tends to be the opposite, okay? So overall, Zensen once again has a more bidirectional, has a more regulatory type of effect on the central nervous system. Okay, so once again, uh, it's not a one-directional, it's not a dose-dependent um, type of effect. All right, it tends to be more regulatory in nature. Another thing that's quite important is Zensen also has a stimulant effect on the endocrine system. So what happens is it st stimulated, stimulates the pituitary, and that in turn will regulate all the glands, including the adrenal cortex, the pancreas, the sex gland, the thyroid glands, and so on. And then in turn, the body will produce more of these hormones. All right, so the patient has an endocrine disorder related to the reduced secretion of the hormones, then then said will stimulate the endocrine system, stimulate the glands, and lead to increase in production of the hormones. Okay, then it also has a significant influence on the in immune system. So it stimulates and enhances the phagocytosis or the macrophages. So this is more of a non-specific immune system where the macrophage will just yeah whatever foreign substance or uh, whatever the immune system considers as enemies. Uh, so this is, once again, the non-specific immune system. But at the same time, different con constituents of Zensen will also stimulate B cells and T cells. And B cells and T cells are the more specific immune system. Okay, so once again, in Zensen has a more broad spectrum effect to stimulate the immune system for both non-specific and also specific immune system. All right, so those are the TCM effects and also the Western pharmacological effects, okay? Uh, however, make sure when you do use Zensen that remember, if one is good, two is not necessarily better. Uh, and what I mean by that is, Practitioners, generally speaking, do not make that mistake. We do prescribe the herb within the therapeutic dosage range. But what happened is Zensen in the United States is a dietary supplement. So uh, consumer can go to um, stores and buy it and consume it on their own. So what happened is, generally speaking, um, consumers don't really understand this very well. Some may take the herb or supplement within the normal dose. Some tend to take it at lower dose. And also, there are some that will dramatically take a larger dose. 
So if the bottle says take two capsules or tablet three times a day, sometimes what they will take the double the dose or sometimes even triple. So then what happened is with the increased dose, sometimes you do see adverse reactions. So this here lists out the most common uh, adverse reactions associated with overdose. Okay, so some examples may include thirst, fever, headache, dizziness, irritability, itching, congestion, fullness, distension in abdomen, and so on and so forth. Okay, so if the patient happens to take too much of a dose, or if the patient is very sensitive, then these are the side effects that you may notice in patients. All right, if the patient notice these type of side effects, Generally speaking, you can categorize them as herb or as effect that is too warm, too hot, too stimulating, basically too much of the qi tonic effect. Then these are the herbal antidotes to treat side effects, adverse reactions, and overdose of zensen. The best general approach is to use an herb called Lai Fu Zi or Seven Rafanas. So this is basically the seed or the daikon radish, or you can also use the daikon radish itself. So this is an herb that's said to distribute or diffuse qi. So if the patient ends up with qi overdose, then you use this herb to diffuse the qi to counter the qi tonic effect. All right. If the patient has a more specific effect or adverse effect, hypertension, hyperactivity, insomnia, restlessness, and so on, then from a practitioner's perspective, this herbal formula with the herbs listed here along with the dose is the best formula to counter those specific complaints by the patient. All right, so this is a treatment for overdose of zensen. Okay, some other concerns of zensen uh, are associated with herb drug, herb drug interactions. All right, so there are three to keep in mind. The first one is with antidepressant, specifically a drug called phenylzine. This one is a MAOI inhibitor specifically for treating depression. Uh, what happened is this drug or this category of drug really is not prescribed much anymore. And the reason is because uh, they tend to cause a lot of side effects. They tend to cause a lot of interactions. And what happened is they basically uh, block and increase a lot of different neurotransmitters in an effort to boost the mood. But what happens is when you block and increase the effect of many neurotransmitters, including serotonin, epinephrine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine, and so on, they cause a lot of side effects, adverse reactions, drug drug interactions, and also in this case, possibly herb drug interaction. All right, so you're not going to see these drugs very often, okay, but when you do, then try to avoid zensen, uh, try to avoid other herbs that may be very warm, very hot, and go to the heart, okay, because there's higher chance of interaction. Another interaction I would also keep in mind is if the patient is taking immunosuppressant drugs such as cyclosporin, and the reason is because cyclosporin is a drug used to suppress the immune system primarily for two purposes. Uh, one is possible cancer, but more commonly, patients that have organ transplant uh, to suppress the immune system to reduce the risk of organ rejection. And obviously, at Zensen, as we mentioned, does stimulate the immune system. Okay, so in theory, may counter the effect of cyclosporin. Um, I'm not aware of any documented interaction, but I think the consequence is potentially quite serious. Therefore, it's best to avoid use of zensen and cyclosporin at the same time. And the last possible, possible interaction is with coumarin, or coumarin or warfarin. Um, this one is more of an academic study. And what I mean by that is uh, you have volunteers in which um, an interaction is noticed between warfarin and zensen, but this is something that really hasn't been noticed or documented in patients that take coumarin and ginseng. Okay, so for now, I would say use it with caution. Uh, but the actual interaction of coumarin is really with blood tonics and not so much with qi tonics. All right, so that's our first example with zensen, which is a qi tonic. Now let's go to the dang gui, which is a blood tonic. Okay, dang gui literally means shall return. Okay, so it's implying that for people that have lost a lot of blood, Okay, whether it's through trauma, injury, menstruation, and so on. And as a result of losing a lot of blood, their health starts to suffer. 
So by taking down Gui, implying that the state of their health shall return after taking this herb. Okay, so once again, if you have lack of blood, then obviously lack of blood cannot nourish many different parts of the body. And as a result, uh, they, they cannot possibly have optimal health. So by taking the blood to nourish different organs and systems, obviously you give the body a chance to heal itself. Right? So Dangui is a very important herb to tonify the blood and once again help the body to heal itself. All right. So the main function of Dangui and Jellica sinensis is primarily to tonify blood and then to a minor effect to also move the blood as well. Okay, so the body of Dangui is mainly to tonify blood. The tail, the you know, smaller roots, is also to move the blood. Other effects include to invigorate blood circulation and relieve pain, and also to moisten the intestine and unblock the bowels. Oh, Donna, Sam, can you, is there any water? All right, thanks. All right, so from a TCM perspective, once again, Dangui's function is mainly to tonify blood and also to move the blood and relieve pain. But from a Western perspective, what happened is uh, it, it is not just a hematopoietic, which means to pr nourish blood and generate blood cells, but what happens is once you're able to generate blood cells, generate the volume of blood and increase blood circulation, obviously what happens is as the blood circulates to different parts of the body, you will then have many uh, cascading effects uh, where uh, whatever is wrong with the body, it will then help to speed up the healing and the recovery. All right, so hematopoietic is the very first step. And then after that, as we mentioned, as you help the body to help itself and heal itself, many other parts of the body, whatever may be wrong or whatever may not be functioning properly, they will all start to improve, they will all start to recover. And that's why you have many other pharmacological effects, including immunostimulant effect, cardiovascular effect, antipolitic effect, anticoagulant effect, hepatoprotective, nephroprotective, neuroprotective, osteogenic, anti-osteoporotic, and so on and so forth. All right, so once you start this domino effect, nourish the blood, improve blood circulation, many other things that's not op operating optimally will all begin to improve. All right, so the primary effect, once again, is to tonify the blood. So Dengue has a great, significant hematopoietic effect to increase the red blood cell count, the white blood cell count, the hemoglobin, the hematocrit, bone marrow cells, platelets, and so on and so forth. All right, so this is literally to help the body to promote, to generate more of these blood cells, okay? What also happened is Dangui, to a small extent, also has an anti and anticoagulant effect, okay? So even though this herb has these descriptions, anti and anticoagulant, it's really a mild effect as far as Dangui is concerned, okay? If you look at many of the other blood movie herbs, and we discuss this in the other categories. What happened is the terminology is the same, but the potency will be a lot stronger. So those herbs include Chuanxiong, Sinidium, Taozen, Persica, Honghua, Cartamus, maybe even uh, Sui Zi, Li, and so on and so forth. So Dangui, as far as, as its anti polylet and anticoagulant effect goes, I would say is relatively minor. Basically what happened is, it is to help its primary effect, which is to tonify blood, from causing stagnation. So basically the effect of moving the blood is just enough where the tonic effect doesn't cause stagnation. But if you're using this herb by itself to do blood stasis, it's probably not gonna be enough. All right, so overall, Dangui improves blood rheology, which is the blood flow, and it also reduces the blood viscosity, so it's able to flow better. All right? At the same time, it will also help to prevent atherosclerosis, okay? And that is the buildup or the blood plaque or the blood lipid on the inside wall of the blood vessels, all right? So 
by tonifying the blood, by helping the blood to flow, flow better, by having some anticoagulant and antipolitic effect and so on, it helps to prevent atherosclerosis. All right, so in addition to that, once, once again, like we mentioned, helping the body to help itself. So it helps to the body to protect itself and specifically to prevent damages to many different parts of the body, many different organ systems of the body. Mostly the liver, which is hepatoprotective effect, the kidney, nephroprotective effect, the nerves, neuroprotective effect, the bones, and also the cartilages osteoprotective effect, and also control protective effect. All right, so Dangui is definitely an excellent herb, not only for tonifying the blood, but also to protect many different parts of the body. Okay, and there are also specific examples. And here, uh, I only gave you the headlines because we don't have time to get into the specific details. Um, I'm in the process of writing the second edition of the Chinese Medical Herbology and Pharmacology. So what I have come across is a lot of examples of drug herb interaction, but really it's specifically drug herb interaction in terms of herbs helping to treat the side effect and toxicity of the drugs. So they are also considered drug herb interaction, but it's more in the way of using herb to treat the side effect of the drugs or toxicity of the drugs to better or increase the overall uh, treatment results or to improve the quality of life or reduce the toxicity or improve the patient compliance. All right, so in this particular case, use of acetaminophen or Tylenol is significant in causing liver damage, right? So use of Dangui will help to prevent liver damage induced by acetaminophen. Dangui will also help to prevent nephrotoxicity induced by cisplatin, which is a chemo drug. It will also help to prevent pulmonary fibrosis induced by bleomycin and also improve mental function and prevent amnesia induced by scopolamine and cyclohexamine. All right, so once again, Dangui is very helpful to protect many different parts of the body, many different organs of the body, and these are the four specific examples. Okay, uh, there is one caution, and that is, and this is, Still inconclusive, but what happened is Dangui has been linked with possibly being a phytoestrogen type of herb. So it may increase the production of estrogen or it may have estrogen type of effect. But what happened is this is really not confirmed. We really don't know enough. But the c concern is that if the patient has an estrogen dependent breast cancer, then what happened is, is use of Dangui considered contraindicated. So like I mentioned, you know, there's mixed evidence at this point. There is some study that shows that this is something that you need to concern, consider and use it with caution or perhaps contraindicated. But there are also a lot of studies that show that use of Dangui really does not show any significant effect as far as the production of estrogen or estradiol. Therefore, it should not be an issue. Okay, but so, so, so far, basically the bottom line is there is data on both sides, some to show that you should be, cons you should be considered, some to show that you don't need to be. Uh, so I would say personally at this point in time, if a patient has a hormone dependent breast cancer and this is a big concern, then it's probably best not to use this herb at this time until there's more data available. Okay, one other possible drug herb interaction that we should consider is, like we mentioned, Dangui does have a mild anticoagulant and antipolitic effect. So when it's combined with Coumadin or Warfarin, what happens is the pharmacokinetic is really not affected. So that's the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination is not affected, but the pharmacodynamic effect does get affected. And what that means is, the overall anticoagulant and antipolitic effect is amplified a bit, so the INR, which is the international normalization ratio, is affected. So what that basically means is if the patient is taking warfarin and take Dangui at the same time, there is a slightly higher risk of bleeding and bruising. All right, so if you do use Dangui, 
make sure you exercise caution to monitor blood, you know, bleeding and bruising. Make sure the patient is aware of this possible drug herb interaction and same with the physician. So if you do decide to use this herb, make sure everybody is aware, the doctor and the patient and yourself. Um, so if there's any interaction, you know the, ca the warning signs, you know what step to take and to correct the problem. All right, so that's the blood tonic herb. And next, we'll talk about the yang tonic. Okay, uh, what happened is Fu Zi Aconite is a herb that's not only a gray, very potent yang tonic, it's also an herb that dispels cold. So this is an herb we have already talked about at great length during the interior warming category. So I won't repeat it over here, but if this is something that you want to learn or you know uh, brush up on, make sure you watch the section on interior warming category. But instead, we'll talk about uh, talk about another herb called yin yang huo, which is epimedium. Okay, yin yang huo literally means the horny gold wheat. Okay, and the reason this herb is called horny gold wheat is because that is, that's how this herb was initially observed and identified. And what happened is they noticed a uh, certain herd of goats tend to be very sexually active. They tend to reproduce a lot faster. And when they look into it more, they notice that this particular herd of goats tend to be farmed or tend to gather in a shady part of the mountain. And they, they ate a particular type of plant. And that's how they become very sexually active and they reproduce a lot more. So when they give it to humans, uh, they notice the same effect in the humans. So that's how this herb got its name. Okay, and what happened is this herb, basically as more and more is learned, they found that this herb to have a great effect to tonify the kidney yang. And in this case, primarily the sexual and reproductive effect of the kidney yang. So basically it stimulates the endocrine system, increase the production of the sex hormones, and therefore cause a lot of increase in sexual activities. All right, so pharmacological effect wise, the most significant is this effect on increased production of testosterone and also estrogen, basically the sex hormones. All right, and again, uh, yin yang huo, epimedium, stimulates the pituitary sex gland axis in male to increase the production and secretion of testosterone. All right, so this is the main herb if the patient has any type of sexual and reproductive disorders. And at the same time, this is a warm, warm herb that will also help to dilate blood vessels, relax the muscles in the penis, uh, and therefore, also help with the er erection as well. Okay, at the same time, it also enhance and increase the production and release of follicle stimulating hormone and also estradiol. Okay, uh, one other thing is uh, yin yang huo. Uh, obviously, to a non-Chinese speaker, it means nothing. Uh, but literally, in Chinese medicine or Chinese language. It means horny go wheat. Okay, so the uh, implication is not necessarily the best as far as medical terminology is concerned. So a lot of time, what happens is the alternate name is often written on the prescription, and the alternate alternate name is called xian ning pi. And this is to avoid the obvious or un embarrassing situation. If the patient is taking an herbal prescription to the pharmacy or, uh, yeah, to the pharmacy, and the name or the herb is horny go wheat, all right? And that's why uh, this alternate name, uh, and a lot of practitioners, in fact, use this alternate name, okay? Another thing that to keep in mind is the old name and old part of the plant that's used is called yin yang huo, herbal epimedium. Uh, herbal refers to all the part above the ground. But what happened is the leaf is determined to be the most effective part. So today, uh, the pharmacological name is generally changed to folium epimedium. Okay, so that's a kidney yang tonic herb. And the last herb we're going to cover here is gou qi zi, which is a yin tonic herb. And gou qi zi is one of the most important herbs 
to tonify liver, kidney, and also lung in. Uh, this herb is used quite a bit in TCM in the past, uh, be obviously as an herbal medicine, but it's also used quite a bit as a food. Okay, so a lot of a lot of cooking in Chinese culture also use, uses gojizi. And today, what happened is this is becoming a very popular food and also dietary supplement in uh, all the Western world as well. Okay, so people use this in food, in drinks, in acai bowl, in yogurt, and so on and so forth. So this is definitely becoming a very important herb. Okay, so this herb is a very important in tonic. It tonifies the lung in, the stomach in, the liver in, the kidney in. So basically what happened is what happened is it helps the anatomy and the form for many different parts of the body. It helps it to retain its optimal size and be able to carry out its optimal functions. So applying to many different parts of the body, including the eyes, the endocrine glands, the brain, the nerves, the liver, the bones, the skin, and so on and so forth. Okay, so all these pharmacological functions that it's able to do, think of it as this herb help these tissue, help these organs, help these cells to maintain its proper form and in turn to carry out the proper functions. Okay, so w in, in, the, in the realm of maintaining the proper form, this herb helps to defend against many drug-induced toxicities, including doxorubicin-induced cardiotoxicity, irradiation-induced reproductive toxicity, cisplatin-induced hair toxicity, chemotherapy-induced myelosuppression, and also doxorubicin-induced testicular toxicity. So once again, a lot of these are very toxic drug and treatments, especially chemotherapy, radiation, and so on, that destroy and damage the cells, organs, and their forms, and therefore leading to the compromise function. So if you are able to nourish in, defend the damage to the anatomy and the form, and then once again, uh, if you are able to maintain the form, the function won't suffer. All right, so that's basically what yin tonic herbs do, and that's what go qi zi lysium does. All right, so those are the one example from the qi, tonic, qi tonics, yang tonic, blood tonic, and in tonic. All right, so now I'll quickly give you some examples of the herbal formulas that corresponds to each of the four categories as well. So the first one is Si Jun Zi Tang, Four Gentlemen's Decoction. And this is uh, referring to the four herb in the formula that have a gentle, moderate, but sustained effect to tonify qi. All right, so the four herbs are Zen Sen, Jin Zen, Bai Su, Attracted Lotus, Fu Ling Poria, and Zi Gan Cao Licorice. Okay, so this formula is primarily to tonify the spleen and stomach qi deficiency. So once again, to tonify the digestive system, to help the body to digest, absorb food and nutrients, to stay well, or if they are suffering a long-term chronic illness, to start the step, take the first step toward healing and recovery. All right, so that's a very simple description from a TCM perspective, perspective for this formula. And then these are the Western disease uh, diagnosis for application of this formula. Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, gastritis, al peptic ulcer disease, and so on. Um, the formula probably is not the best used by itself for some of these diseases. And the reason is because if you look at peptic ulcer disease, what happens is the symptom basically is stomach heat because of the stomach ulcer, stomach acid, but there's underlying deficiency. So make sure you do a TCN differential diagnosis so you don't just use si jun zi tang, but rather also some other herbs that treat the stomach heat as well. So these are diseases in which this formula is applicable for part of the whole thing, but not necessarily all by itself. All right. The next formula is one called si wu tang, which is the four substance decoction. Okay. So four once again refers to the four herbs in this formula, and those are su di huang prepare Romania, 
Dangui and Jala Casanensis, Bai Sao, Huai Pioni, and Chuan Xiong, Augusticum. All right. And these are the four main herbs to tonify the blood. And once again, tonify the white blood cell, red blood cell, the platelets, uh, and so on. And once again, not just for the blood itself, but also the blood and its ability to nourish many other organs and parts of the body. Okay, so the body can help itself. And these are the Western diagnosis or Western indications, primarily anemia and also all the problems that occur as a result of anemia. Okay, and then this is a in tonic formula called Liu Wei Di Huang Wan. So Liu Wei refers to six ingredients, and Di Huang is a Romania. So the, this is a formula with six herbs: Su Di Huang, Romania, San Zhu Yu, Fructus Cornus, San Yao, Rhizoma Dioscoria, and these are the three tonic herbs to nourish in. And then you have three sedating herbs or clearing herbs, Zhe Xie, Elisma, Mudan Pi, Cortex Mountain, and Fu Ling Poria. And the reason is because you need to balance the tonic and the clearing so the formula can be taken long term without causing stagnation. All right. This formula is primarily for liver and kidney indeficiency. And like we mentioned, uh, indeficiency basically refers to the slow atrophy, consumption, deterioration in the forms of the body. And as the forms gradually is depleted its atrophy, you may also have indeficiency heat, you may also have compromise in the functions as well. And this formula can actually be used to treat a lot of distant, different Western diagnoses including diabetes, menopause, coronary heart disease, hypertension, hypotension, hyperthyroid, hypothyroid, and so on and so forth. Okay, and in Western medicine, that actually is quite confusing. How can you have one formula that treats the opposite end of the same disease? You know, and by that I mean hyperthyroid and hypothyroid, possibly hypertension and hypotension. And the reason is because Liu Wei Di Fang Wan, um, has a set of two functions, right? It has three tonic herbs and three clearing herbs. And basically my interpretation of that is that this formula has a great influence over the endocrine system. So the three tonic herbs basically act as a stimulating hormone to get a target organs to produce more hormones. Okay, so whatever the disease may be, whatever the lack of hormone may be, the tonic herb will help to produce more hormone. And then what happens is when there is enough hormone released to the bloodstream, then clearing herb will act as a negative feedback signal to tell the pituitary gland that there's no reason to stimulate and produce any more hormones. And that's why with a proper balance, this formula can treat a lot of many different conditions. So you can start with Liu Wei Di Huang Wan, Romania 6, as a core, as the base. And then from there on, there are many different variations of this formula to target different specific glands and treat many different problems. And what I mean by that is you start with Liu Wei Di Huang Wan, 6 ingredient P of Romania. And then the variations include Zi Bai Di Huang Wan, Animarina, Phyllodendron, and Romania Pearl. Mai Wei Di Huang Wan, Ophiopogon, Cisandra, and Romania. That's for the lung. Qi Ju Di Huang Wan, Lycian Fruit, Chrysanthemum, and Romania Pearl. That's mostly for your eyes and your ears. And then Ba Wei Di Huang Wan, a r ingredient pair with Romania. So this is a formula not just for indeficiency, but also to tonify the young at the same time. And that brings us to the last formula. Okay, and this is primarily a young tonic. So in addition to the same six herbs, you have two additional herbs at the bottom, and that's Zhou Gui, Cinnamon Bark, and Fu Zi, uh, Aconite. And these are the two herbs that tonify the kidney yang. So this formula is properly balanced to tonify the kidney yin, tonify the kidney yang, and at the same time have herbs that help to clear so you don't end up with stagnation. So primarily to tonify kidney yang and treat the sexual, reproductive, genital urinary, and all the endocrine disorders. So once again, has a very, very broad,
possible applications because now you're looking at both anatomy and physiology form and function decline that are associated with aging, that are associated with decreased endocrine functions. All right, so that completes the examples of four single herbs, four classic formulas that tonify chi, blood, yin, and yang. All right, and these are some of the examples with collection formulas. GI, for, GI tonic is primarily a chi tonic formula for the spleen and stomach. Shisandra ZZZ is primarily a formula to nourish blood, calm the shen, okay, and help with insomnia. Imperial tonic is a formula that treats a little bit of everything. So it tonifies the qi, blood, nourishing, and tonify, tonify yang all at the same time. Kidney, in, kidney tonic in, as the name implies, is primarily a kidney in tonic. And then kidney yang tonic uh, is kidney tonic yang, is primarily kidney, ton, yang, kidney yang tonic. Okay? And then there are also many formulas that tonify the liver and kidney in to treat the long-term chronic musculoskeletal disorder. So neck and shoulder CR is primarily for the neck and shoulder long-term pain and atrophy of the muscles. And back support is for the lower back and legs. And then knee and ankle is CR is for the knee and ankle of the lower limbs. Okay, so basically once you stand, understand the rationale, the name help you to understand what the Chinese formula does and also what part of the body it's for. And this last formula, I think, is for the muscle, ligaments, and tendon. It's called Flex MLT. And then our COA is a formula that tonifies the kidney yin and also the kidney jin to help with the bones recover from the bone fracture and right? bone mass density and osteoporosis. All right? So once again, that's my talk today on the tonic groups. Okay, so if you have any questions at all, feel free to send me an email or send down an email. If you have any comments, suggestions, suggestions for topics for next week, um, wrapping up this introductory to the Chinese Herb series, once again, send me some ideas and I will try to incorporate as much of, the, as much of that into next week's class. All right, thank you very much. And I'll talk to you, actually not next week, next month. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Chen, and thank you everyone for joining us today. The rest of this series can be found on either eLotus.org or our YouTube channel. And so you can check either one. That is it for today, everyone. Thank you so much. And this class has been recorded, and it will be available on our YouTube as well as our TCM Wisdom too, which can be found at eLotus.org. And the eLotus.org version will be available tomorrow afternoon, but for YouTube, you can access it right away. So if you want to watch it again, you are more than welcome to. Thank you guys so much, and we will see you at our next webinar. Bye.